The MVC pattern and interfaces. The purpose of the MVC pattern is to make robust code and separate data, logic and user interface. By decoupling these three elements, you can easily model your application without breaking it. The bigger a project is, the more important it is to build a sound foundation. So taking your time to get this right from the beginning will spare you a lot of headache and time in the other end. Another technique I will show here is interfaces. In the previous episode, I have shown how to dispatch custom events and build a few interface elements. So in this episode, I will build upon that. In this episode, I will build an application with two dials and a slider controlling each other. At the end, I will show how you can change the interface and how you can change the application's logic without breaking the application. So let's take a quick tour of the files in the application. First of all, I have the main file. This is where I assemble all the elements of the application. Then I have a model. This is the part of the application that dispatches the event to the other part and receive the update from the controller. I have an interface to the controller that defines the method available, public available to other classes. Then I have two implementations of the controller, the reset controller and the wave controller. For the interface, I have built two kinds of views, the slider view and the dial view. Inside the library folder, I have a bunch of files from the previous episodes. Let's walk through the individual classes in the MVC pattern. The model. All the model has in this example is an update function. It takes an ID and a value, and it dispatches an event with the ID and the value. How this works you can see in the previous episode. Next, let's have a look at the slider view. The slider view takes a pointer to a model, a controller, and has an ID. And this is stored in local variables. Then it creates a new slider, and this you can see how it's done in episode 6. Then it adds two event listeners. One to itself, so it can see when it's added to the stage, and one to the model, so it can see when the ID is updated with the position. In the update function, it updates the controller with its own ID and the value passed from the slider, and in the set push, it receives an event from the model. That's this one. And it sets the slider's position. So when the slider is moved, the update function is called with its value, and it calls the controller's update function with its ID and value. Inside the wave controller, when the update function is called with the ID and value, it matches the ID and it performs some logic on the, on the value and call the model's update function. The model is responsible for changing the application's state. Um, you can also save the state of the model of the application in a database or in a file here. But all we do this time is to dispatch a new event. And you can also use this for undo and save it in a list. But in this case, we're just dispatching a new application event with the ID and value. To close the circle, we go back to the slider view. The slider view added an event listener to the model with its own ID and a function pointer to the set push function. So when the dispatched event is catch, it unpack the event's get push and call the slider's set push function with that position. Finally, we need to look at the controller and the, this class called a view, and that is an abstract classes defining an interface for views. So if you look at the views, they extended the a view class. 
and the interface for the controller, if we look at the controllers, they implemented the iController interface. Now we have to look at how these classes are used in our main class. So we create some variables, a model, a controller of the type iController, and three views um, of the type a view. And then down in the new function, we create the new model, we, cre we create a new wave controller, that was the controller we looked at before, and we call tree function build view one, two, and three. And let's go through one of them, the build view one function. So it creates a new view one, it says, to a new dial view and add it to the stage and it's positioned on the stage. And if we build this and run it, so we go build and we go to the Firefox, here it is. And we can try to pull the dial and we see the two other dials goes in something like a wave and if I pull this one, again, they go in a wave, it updates back. In the main class, we can try to do two things. First, we can change the slider view to a dial view for view tree. And we can build the application, reload it in the browser, and voila, the slider is exchanged with a dial and everything is still working. And we can go back and we can change the logic. I just undo this. And we can change the logic for the application. And instead of using the wave controller, we can use the reset controller. So in the model, in the main class, I just use a reset controller instead. Build the application. I reload it in the browser. And what's happening now is when I pull an interface element, the 2R gets reset to zero. And that's because inside my reset controller, I have another logic that resets them, the 2R views to zero. And this is how I can change the logic of my application. So why does this work? As I said before, the controller was created where it implements the iController class. And this way I can freely exchange the controller. If I inside my main function have declared instead of iController, a wave controller here, I couldn't build the application. And the same goes for the views. If I instead have declared the view tree as a dial view, I couldn't build it. I can also easily add a new view to my interface. I just do it by creating a copy of view tree. And let's call it view four. And I build a view four. Oh, and I copy the build view tree function and paste it in here. Exchange all the trees to false and move it um, 40 pixel to the right so it don't goes on top of the other one. And instead of the reset controller, I want to use the wave controller. And then I build it. I go back to my browser and reload it, and voila, I got two sliders. And if I put the other slider, it's actually update the knobs. And the two sliders get updated. And this is an example of how convenient it is to use the model view controllers pattern for applications and how flexible it is. So you can actually change the logic and the interface without breaking the application.